Hello everyone, welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video, I am going to try to land the mini queue on the surface of Mars and hopefully drill for ore so that I can get back to orbit. But there's no guarantee that that's going to work out. We already know that it's sort of aerodynamically imbalanced, so that doesn't help anything. We do have parachutes to help us orient for the final phase of landing, but there's no guarantee that that's going to be enough to make a soft landing out of it. And there's all sorts of other stuff. We have to make sure we land in a place with ore. We have communication to think about. And so, yeah, if we take a look at the ore situation, let's remind ourselves. And we have to raise the cutoff so that we have enough ore. And this spot right here is the best. We will pass over it at certain times. Uh, for now, we just need to sort of bring our orbit down a bit. So I'm going to, since we were at apoapsis already, uh, bring our periapsis down and start that off. Okay, I'll go with, uh, let's be safe, 65 kilometer periapsis I think will not bring us all the way down. Okay, let's just double check our comms. Well, so far so good, we have a direct line back home on this side, so that's good. Okay, well... We need to take in the solar panels. That is a ridiculous amount of power draw. Why do we have 24 kilowatts of power draw? And then 29 when I use the... I mean, that's fine with the robotics and all, but... 24 is more than I was... Hold on, we need to turn that off. That is not right. We shouldn't be using 24 kilowatts. Is it the radiator? No, that's a tiny little bit. It's still using 24. Oops, let's get automated off. Um, yeah, that is highly irregular. I mean, we have fuel cells on board. We've got a life support fuel cell and a mega fuel cell to power the ISRU units, and you might have wondered are the ISRU units running? And that's a good question, but um, I'm just toggling them to make sure. But no, no, they're not. So I guess we'll have to run the fuel cell. The mega one that's meant to run the ISRU units can handle it, but this is not good for our situation at all. Oh, oh, oh. It was holding retrograde fine until just now. Now it's bending backwards a bit. Okay, we are now going back up. Um, seems like we'll be in a sort of tight orbit. I mean, either we're going to be in a tight orbit or we're going to end up landing over here, so... <laughs> because we didn't make orbit. So it'll be okay. In fact, maybe I should just force it down over here. I mean, we're pretty well lined up right now. If we just run the engines a little bit. Oh, it's actually going back to... Oh, that's because we're higher up. Hmm. No, we've got a line back and everything. Well, that, that could be a horizon problem over here, though. Uh, you know what? I, I don't know if Alt F5 is going to work while we're in the atmosphere and everything, but let's try something. I don't know. Mini Q1. Okay, so let's say I wanted to force the issue. Draw doesn't work. Well, uh, I better arm the parachutes. It's wiggling a little bit. Okay, we're on a pretty definitive trajectory into the purple zone. Let me just check what the parachute configuration is. Guess that's all right. They'll just be drogue chutes. We'll still have to use the engines for landing. Okay, yeah, we are going to be somewhere in the purple zone. Or pink zone. No problem there. Just want to make sure we keep communication. That should be all right. Just in case, though, I'm going to fire the engines a little bit more. 
Okay, well, we've just lost comms. I don't know why. We should have a line back still. Hmm. Maybe plasma? I don't know. I mean... Kerbin's there. Let's just verify. Uh, can we see Kerbin? There's Venus. Uh, Uranus. Mercury. Earth is somewhere around there. Oh, we've got it back. Okay, but uh, the times are ticking here. Okay, I'm gonna use some thrust to slow down further for the parachutes. We're obviously not oriented right, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, there's the parachutes. Just keeping a minimal, minimal amount of thrust here. There's no reason not to. We have the Delta V. And we're not getting back into orbit unless we fill up with ore and everything. Well, I and mean convert the ore. So this is safer. It's rolling about, but that's not a problem, I don't think. Oh, 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 the, the parachutes are going wonky. Oh no, please, just hold it. <laughs> Oh, our, our, our uh, control system because we were holding negative surface. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh, okay, okay. I thought I turned that off. Fortunately, I uh, sort of rounded the belly, so <laughs> it can rock back and forth just fine. That's not a problem. Okay, I, I don't want to run the big fuel cell right now, but it's crazy how much power we're using. Oh, that's not really what I wanted to do. I need to extend these first. I don't even know if the solar panels are going to provide enough power with it drawing 24 for some reason. I mean, four drills and everything. Now, now it thinks that this is stowed. The radiator. I don't know. Okay, let's see if we can get ore. Looks like we've got some power at least. Start surface harvester. Well, it's working. Probably gonna be very slow, but it's working. And our methane and oxygen is actually boiling off too fast. There's no way we're gonna get enough to match boil off. Uh, well, th that's what the radiator is supposed to help with, though. Um, yeah. We are going to need that radiator to actually open. Let me go to the tracking station and come back. When it says cannot deploy while stowed, I just went to the tracking station and came back and it still can't deploy while stowed. I don't know why it's stowed. So, all right, tell you what, I'll restart the game and hope it can deploy. How about that? At least our power seems balanced, even though I've got the methane and oxygen running but we're not making up for the boil off at this rate okay so I've restarted the game and everything and extend radiator cannot deploy while stowed well that's not good is it maybe I should have just left it out <laughs> I mean so, without the radiator, maybe we should have had a backup radiator or something. I don't know what to do about that. There's currently no backup for it to mitigate the boil off, so we are boiling off more methane and oxygen than we can produce. And, yeah. we've. I actually wanted that off, I don't know why it was on. But it wasn't puffing the RCS or anything anyway. So, and the fuel cell is off, so that's not changing anything. At least we can use the solar panels. So, yeah, well, hmm. It could work, but it's not working right now. I'll have to think about this. Anyway, uh, let's 
start off launching our new ship and start assembling that because eventually we're going to have the next window and we need to put it all together and make sure it's in position to go. Though of course it'll uh, take into consideration some of the changes we need to make and some of the things we've learned from the previous attempt, the currently in orbit around Mars attempt, and we'll see what we can do. But I think the the drive section, maybe we should launch some fuel tanks first. That's the easiest thing. Yeah. I think we'll just launch some hydrogen tanks and build out from there. Maybe we'll want to change the back up a little bit. Maybe we'll want we'll definitely want to change the habitat and see what we can do with that. But the hydrogen fuel tanks are pretty much what they are. So we'll just go with those. Okay, so here we go, starting the construction of our next ship. And we will see how it goes. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. A little bit of a wiggle of the tower. It's a nighttime launch, as you can see. That's how it will be for this season. And we want to still aim for Cape Canaveral and everything. We are once again packing Star Stage 2 which is a recoverable methane oxygen stage. And that is because this is a purely low Earth orbit mission. We are still gotta construct the ship in low Earth orbit first, then send it to a high orbit before putting crew on it. I think a lot of the innovation will come about with the habitat. And I might create an entirely new habitat part for it. We'll see. I'm also pondering a second ship design that's more of a dumbbell design with the ion thrusters at the center and then habitat on one side and nuclear stuff on the other side. And then that would rotate to generate artificial gravity, but the ion engines at the center would mean the ion engines could continue to provide thrust for an extended period of time. Okay, switching off some engines and rolling. I've also been pondering a larger Venture Star. I've been looking at Venture Star in other Realism Overhaul sandbox videos, and the problem with it is it doesn't carry as much payload to orbit as I would need, for instance, for this series. But maybe there's some way to improve upon that by, well, just making it bigger. <laughs> Just making it bigger might help. We will see about that sort of idea. And shut down. That's good enough. Okay. And separation. And fairings. Fairings. And control from here. And stabilization. And ignition. Well, throttle up. We are lining up with the moon as usual. This has its MLI layers. Heat penetration is increasing though. We're in space, I'll extend the radiators. If there's anything we've learned, we should extend the radiators and keep them extended. Well, I don't know. I don't know if Mars' atmosphere is strong enough, if the dynamic pressure would have been great enough to break the radiator on the mini -Q. I'm not sure. And while I'm here, well, maybe we should wait until I detach the Star Stage 2 before renaming it, but we ought to rename it ahead of time. And I was going with locations on Route 66, or from the Route 66 song, actually, so... Technically, it, uh, it starts with Chicago, but I started with St. Louis. So, the next city on the list is Joplin. I'll probably skip Oklahoma City because that's just too particular uh, and go with Amarillo instead, but uh, Joplin it is. And we could also say it's named after Janice Joplin while we're at it. Why not? Or Scott Joplin. Plenty of Joplins around. Okay, and shut down. 223 by 196, let's say. And we have a little bit to spare, so maybe I'll wait until Apoapsis and boost it up a bit. It'll make uh, rendezvous easier. 
Things can sort of sneak underneath. K448 almost. And I'll circularize it and then we'll have Star Stage 2 come down. Okay. Ignition. And that's good enough for me. All right. So, yes, that is the separation we are looking for. Okay, over here. RCS. Field rotation. Let's control from this end, make sure of that. There we go. Oops. Okay, and I will rename it. So, this will be the Joplin. I'm not going to follow it down. We should launch another one of the tanks, attach it, and really get this thing started. Okay. Now it'll be pretty convincing, and normally we would knock the adapter off, but I am just going to not do that. <laughs> we'll leave this uh, deorbiting. I'll I'll arm the parachutes just for show, but we're not following it. So, okay, let's do another launch. We actually waited a whole two days, and the Joplin is like right there, but we're not quite in line with it, as you can see. Let's see if we can wait a little bit. And hopefully it'll come around again. Well, we probably can't wait long enough. All right. By nature, if the other launch was at night, this one's going to be at night too. We're, we haven't changed seasons yet. So SAS on, bottle up, and ignition. And launch. The benefit of Venture Star over this is that we don't have the huge G-force problem that we do when returning the carrier plane over to Cape Canaveral, right? It's on a suborbital trajectory, gets a lot of G-forces, would need to be much stronger. But on the bright side, we don't have to have the huge body of the Venture Star because we've got two stages, right? And they're both reusable, but it's not an SSTO. And we don't even need to reserve much propellant in the carrier plane. We just need enough for RCS on the way down. But, you know, there's something nice about having an SSTO. If we could make it do what we need it to do, which is carry about 45 tons to lower Earth orbit. But it's got to need to be bigger. I mean, Venture Star as it is can do 20 tons. And it's a thousand tons on the pad, so maybe if we make it 2,000, 2,200-ish, it would be good. Something like that. I mean, that's still about the same as the shuttle, it's just that it's all in one body. Okay, and separation. Okay, RCS is on, control from here, fairings. And we just go prograde for now. No, not target. Okay, um, ignition. Uh oh, our antenna cannot be deployed while stowed. I need fewer things that cannot be deployed while stowed right now. wonder why some things decide to be that way and other things don't. Because they're all in the same place right now, but and now the antenna is okay. If only I could figure out how to undo that from our mini queue. Just tell it that it's not stowed. I don't I guess there must be a line in the Persistent file. After we do this launch and get this over to our mission, we'll take a look at the mini queue to see if that's fixed or not. And 
one off. 210 by 188. Well, should be able to catch up. Can we get the other antenna out now? Nope. But uh, that's fine. We've got everything else out and one should be good enough. Well, technically the Joplin's behind us, but eventually we'll get there. Well, let's set up a tangency point and correct inclination at the same time. Okay. Oh, it took longer to sell than I thought. Oh, come on, little engines. Okay, there we go. Ignition. Well, pretty much perfect. All right. All right. Hopefully the stages can handle the rest. I mean, not the stages, the tanks can handle the rest. I'm going to let the stage deorbit now. Okay, so this can go retrograde. And ignition. And we will assume that's good enough. All right, let's just dock these two together and then we'll check back with the mini queue. Uh, well, we just lost comms again. Uh, well, hopefully I'm just sort of drifting to a connection here. We do have to do something about the comms, it looks like. <laughs> Well, let's see. Will it boink or will it connect? I can't puff at all. It's looking a little bit off. It won't be disastrous. It'll just be... On oh, no, we've got a connection now. <laughs> it's only a little brief lapses now. But they're enough to annoy for sure. Okay, we are connected. So now we've got two tanks together, and that is what we are calling the Joplin for now. So, uh, there's a little bit of liquid hydrogen boil off. There's no other reason for it to be going away, so there is that. Two watts there. Twenty watts here. We're in the dark. <laughs> Darn it. It should be cold over here. We've got radiators and everything. I don't know. Is that going down at least? Yeah, it's going down. All right, we'll leave it be for now. Let's go check on the mini queue again. Okay, please, can we extend the radiator? No, we can't extend the radiator. So, obviously I left it for quite a few days and now the methane and oxygen are all gone. Hmm. I don't know why all the ore hasn't already been converted to... Oh, I guess it shut off the LOX and methane production during the nighttime or something. But, yeah, that's not going to... Oh, uh, hmm. Well, it doesn't let me start. Core overheating. Well, it would overheat. Yeah, I guess we would have core overheating if the radiator can't... We need a bigger radiator and maybe some surface radiators or something. So we might have to rethink the mini queue because, but it's mainly because we can't deploy that darn thing. But anyway, we at least landed it. So there's that going for us. And it's been trying to drill, maybe not as quickly as I'd like, but there you are. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.